Noble Field, Cedar Point Stadium in Sandusky as BCSM presents high school football. Tonight's matchup between the Clyde Flyers and the Sandusky Blue Streak being brought to you by Dewey Furniture and Carpet. And great to have you on board as we get set to go week eight of the high school football season alongside Dan Lindsley, Ken Walters, ready to bring you this matchup. And an important one indeed, both these clubs into the ball game at five and two and both with records in the league at one and one. So this is the matchup, Dan, that has a lot of ramifications behind it, just not for winning, but also computer points, because basically this is playoff football, my man. And we talked about it just a few moments ago before we came on air. This is, uh, this is playoff football. You get week eight, nine, ten of, uh, in this area. These teams are competing for big time spots in the playoffs. And Sandusky will get the opening kickoff and bringing that ball out is J.T. Lewis to give the streaks their first possession. And with us uh, in 2019 are our friends from the North Shore Running Store on 178 East Market Street in downtown Sandusky, offering you the complete line of top brand running and walking shoes, apparel accessories, gait analysis, nutritional items, and more. That's the North Shore Running Store, 178 East Market Street in Sandusky. Well, I, we definitely have some fall weather for the first time this year, too, so we'll see how these teams adapt to a little cooler temperatures. Oh, you got to love it, my good man. No breeze at all right now. Temperature probably in the mid-50s and a perfect night for football. Sandusky will scrimmage from their 33. Quick out. Sideline play. Noah Kasten will step across the 50 down to about the 46. So there's some of that foot speed that Sandusky has. And Dan, I tell you, that's going to be a critical component to tonight's game. Can Clyde run with Sandusky? Yeah, the speed is... Sp can, can the speed of Sandusky get stopped, shut down by Clyde? I like I like that play call right in the beginning. Get your quarterback a, a, a good, easy pass, and you get about 16 yards on the play. Well, Sandusky right now has the ball at the 48. First and 10 go the blue streaks. Stewart will set up right behind quarterback Michael Franklin. Stewart gets a block. Going to cut to about the 50-yard line, so Cherion will get it across midfield, pick up a couple of yards, and young man has had an outstanding season for Sandusky. 108 carries, 971 yards, and 15 touchdowns on the season. You know, obviously for Clyde, that's that's the guy. Stewart, he, he's no hidden hidden secret anymore. I mean, he, he is a stud, and, and so obviously all week Clyde's prepared to stop Stewart. I love the fact <clears throat> that they run the screen pass early on to try to open things up for Stewart, and he got a nice run there. Uh, Ryan Carter, the veteran coach, he recognizes what the issues are. That one's going to skip in low. Is that for Sandusky to uh, be effective, they're going to have to spread the field a little bit because Clyde, real simply, is going to put eight, nine guys up in the box and, and really, really take away the running game of Sandusky. So they have got to be able to throw the football judiciously, but they've still got to be successful. And you look at Clyde, they're always traditionally very good up front. And they what that what they want to do is get in these third and longs. Here's a third and six, third and seven. You know, this is exactly what the Flyers want when they're playing Sandusky. Get them in third and long, make them throw the football. Well, they empty the backfield for Franklin. Steps up. Running room, he's burying his head and he gets the first down. So Michael Franklin. Nothing down the middle, so he takes off and he picks up seven yards and he'll move the sticks. First and ten Sandusky at the 41. Uh, you can tell that's the son of a coach. He, he, <laughs> he saw that play, he saw the open opening in the middle, he knew where the marker was, he got he got the first down. That's a, that's a smart play early on from a young quarterback that's kind of been thrown into this role more so than, than anything else. He started off the season as the number three quarterback for the Blue Streaks, uh, unfortunately. J.J. Henry, their number two quarterback, went down, and of course they lost a very, very good quarterback. The beginning of the year is inside action again for the Blue Streaks to about the 38-yard line. Yeah, they lost Sean Sayer and the veteran quarterback who, who uh, injured his knee and is out for the year. Yeah, and that's that's a nice job there in the Clyde defense. They're, they're, you can see them. They they got their eye on on Stewart, and they all they all gang tackled, but still Stewart's such a good running back, still is able to get three four yards. Very difficult for one man to bring him down. And one of the key components tonight, can you get him to that second level? Because one-on-one, -on -one, he's incredibly difficult to tackle. He'll empty the backfield again. It's second and five. Motion man Lewis. Franklin. Flag being thrown into the line of scrimmage. More than likely, that'll be a holding call on Sandusky. 
It's been one of the problems for the blue and white this year as they have had way too many penalties here in 2019. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, that was the next thing I was going to say with Clyde's defense. They, when they do, when Sandusky does throw the ball, you got a younger quarterback, not a lot of experience. You want to get some pressure on him. That was the first time they were able to do that. And holding penalty, so that's going to back the streaks up on what looks like a pretty good drive to start the ball game. Franklin has only thrown the ball 25 times this season, excuse me, 45 times since taking over that starting position. As that will back Sandusky up to the 49 yard line. So we'll keep it at a second down. We're going to call it a 16. As we're inside of 10 minutes here, opening quarter, 83 years of football at this site, Strobel Field. A lot of football in the history of this complex. That's a ton, a ton of history. Uh, Patton could shakes one tackle down to about the 40 yard line, and there's Terry on Stewart. You saw it right there, folks. You get him one on one, he'll bust that tackle and get you positive yards. You know what I love about Stewart? He, he's got speed, but. He, <laughs> He got tackled, but I think he he layered he, he leveled the boom there, you know, on that tackle. He he may he instigates the contact. He'll run you over, and that he, not only is he fast, he he he's just fun to watch. A solid 205 pounds at five feet eight, and uh, verbally to Bowling Green State University. And again, he was a first team All Ohio running back last season as a junior. Third and eight, Sandusky, Franklin. Snap throw, it's gonna come in low and incomplete. Like the play call, I just, Franklin just came a little bit low on that. And it was good on second down, they got half of it, you know, second and long, they got half of it back, but that one just a little bit low, so now it's decision time. You got JT Lewis uh, on that slant route, but you're right, you're looking now fourth down at the 40, they have to get the ball to the 33, and I'm gonna play a little field position football, which I think is the appropriate thing to do here early in this contest with nine minutes remaining opening quarter. Let's. Uh, Make Clyde play the long field. Well, I think that's the right decision here. You don't want to give you don't want to give momentum to Clyde early on and try to pin him deep here. Nice right. punt. So is this going to go into the end zone? It will. It gets that carpet bounce and that'll go into the end zone. So the Flyers will take over at their 20. Okay, yeah, he, go ahead. Excuse me. They wanted they I think it, you know ideally you want that ball not to bounce the way it did. You want it to kind of hang up there and. For Clyde, they get a little, they get lucky there, get a break because it looked like it was uh, potentially was going to kick back the other way. The Clyde Flyers coming in with a record of five and two, one and one in conference play. They average 38 points a game, giving up around 18, and offensively about 340 yards a game. And they are an experienced team in the backfield for sure. As Ryan Lozier, the senior quarterback, handles the duties and. Looks like the strikes jumped right there. Oh, this is a story you've read before, and uh, it's a movie you've seen as well. Sandusky uh, penalizing here early in this ball game. We'll wind the clock again. This time it's going to be first and five, so let's move it out to the 25. Empty the backfield for Lozier. Dude, this is as big of a game as it can be for Clyde, you know, with them sitting number 10 in, in Division Four, Region 14, they got to have a win here for, for looking at the playoffs. Well, they'll get the ball out to about the 25, but working forward for some hard yards that time was Golden Gunner, and that young man is a very, very solid back for the Flyers. Golden on the season's got 614 yards rushing, and he is a solid football player. Hey, just like we talked about with Sandusky, this is a this is a big drive for Clyde if they can put something together, get points on the board, being a road team and a big conference game to get the get the first score. Whoever gets that is going to put themselves in a good position. Again, on the defensive side of the ball, the streaks give up 24 points a game, so they are vulnerable. They do have a, a very good secondary, but they have. Uh, been worked over pretty well this year in the running game. Teams have had a lot of success running the ball against the streaks. Golden will line up directly behind Lozier. Give it to him. He's able to break a tackle. He's able to break two tackles. Across the 50. It's a foot race to the 40 to 35. We're going to go down to about the 32 yard line. Is over there to make the tackle for Sandusky was Lewis, but there's part of that running we talked about when it comes to Golden Gunner. 
I like that name. Gunner or Golden? What's your preference? It's I, Gunner I, Golden. Either which way. You know, <laughs> it's Gunner either Golden, which way, But that was, a, that was a nice run. Sadusky had guys at the line of scrimmage, but he breaks those initial two tackles, and then they didn't have any secondary help, and he just gets a, a great run there. 42 yards goes... Gunner, so here we're sitting at the 32, first and 10. Trying to work the edge, cross 25, down to the 23 yard line. Good run right there by Nick Webb. That's another veteran on this club, 6'2", 183 pounds senior. Well, historically, Clyde loves to run the football. Oh, so for sure. They, they know that Sandusky's struggled a little bit this season, stopping the run. You're probably going to see a, a steady diet of, of run plays tonight. Well, again, that's where the streaks have been vulnerable. They're giving up about 230 yards a game rushing the football, so that tells you you can, uh, you can do some damage if you can move those guys off the line of scrimmage. Not much going that time. Wrapped up. Thrown down is Golden. Nice job right there by... By right for the for the uh, blue streaks, um, good job of bottling up, and that's what they got to do. They got to hold the line of scrimmage, and that's probably about the first time in this drive we've seen Sandusky really shut down that run and puts third. a third down here. Third and one. Mosier under center. So a check back to Ryan Carter. Reset the play now inside of 10 seconds on the play clock. Going to go inside, dragging tacklers, not going down initially. Shed of the tackle of Rashawn Redding was able to get the ball inside the 15. So here's the Clyde Flyers' first possession, knocking on the door, first and 10. Well, there again, Golden, you know, he gets hit close to the line of scrimmage, but he just drags guys along and gets six, seven more yards after the hit, and, and that's one thing the streaks are gonna have to do is, is they're gonna have to stop that because they'll keep it on the ground all night and you won't have too many offensive possessions if they if they keep the ball running. Well, they're at the 14 yard line. They took over the football on the exchange of, on the punt at the 20. It's the seventh play of the drive. Putting the head down and driving forward is Nick Webb. We'll stop play here momentarily as Webb gets the ball inside the 10. Which is stopping you can see the play. That this is a this is a playoff like game. Everybody's got a, you get just a little extra edge, a lot more push on the offensive side and defensively. Everybody's attacking the the football. But another nice run there. Still got about five yards. So so trips to the top of the screen. Lozier on the keeper, cuts back, and he went to the end zone, touchdown Clyde. I was just gonna say, you know, Lozier can run the football also, and he, good read right there, good play call, and, and nobody accounted for the quarterback. He gets nine yards for the first score of the game. 80 yards, the Clyde Flyers go, and stepping into the end zone is Ryan Lozier, the senior quarterback, and the Flyers strike first here with five, 16 remaining opening quarter. Comes automatic here in Victor Guzman Moreno. This young man has got a leg. That's right he's down Broadway. Got it. So, yeah, he's got 35 PATs on the season. So, the Clyde Flyers, they go 80 yards. They strike pay dirt. 5 16 remaining. Opening quarter. It's the Flyers 7. Sandusky, nothing as you're watching high school football here on BCSN. Think your school has the most spirit? If you do, and it's true, prove it. Send us pics or video of your hype football student section on Twitter and tag us using hashtag BCSNE. Get creative and show your spirit. Weekly winners will be presented with cool shades thanks to Dewey Furniture. On November 8th, one lucky school with the most energy, creativity, submissions, and school spirit will be crowned season winner and be presented with the Dewey Furniture Football Student Section of the Season Championship belt. Follow BCSN Erie on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for rules and how to enter. Let the games begin. 
With the fall season upon us now, you're not feeling all that well, well, you can try Firelands Virtual Care. It's care at your fingertips. You can visit firelands.com slash virtual care to download the app and get started. That's Firelands Virtual Care. As the streaks, we'll try to muster some offense here. It's over the 30 to about the 32-yard line, so that's where the blue and white will scrimmage first and 10 here in this first quarter with 5-10 remaining. The streaks are so important to answer. Clyde's score here, I, I think, because the way the, the Flyers can run the football, it's so important that Sandusky not allow them to get the ball back here and get a score and even the thing up and get the momentum back in their ball cart. Impressive drives, 70 yards, excuse me, 80 yards went the Flyers. As the Sandusky offense on the field now, they average about 340 yards of offense per game, scoring at a clip of 33 per contest is once again, they'll empty the backfield for Franklin. Franklin throws, Caston, so Caston will work forward, 40, struggling forward, really working hard to get out across the 45, so solid effort by Noah Caston, one of those young men for Sandusky that never comes off the field. Yeah, that, that's, that was about a six yard pass play, and Caston got about six more just on hard work, and again, wouldn't, wouldn't go down. Nice pick up there. Yeah, Noah was one of those solid senior performers 22 receptions, 338 yards, and three touchdowns from that slot position. Kind of was shocked uh, the Blue Stricks come out with, with, the, with nobody in the backfield. I, I don't think Clyde would have been expecting that. Desmond Williams up the middle, driving forward across the 50 to about the 46. So that sophomore showing some inside strength at 165 pounds. Solid pickup of eight, Let's call it second and two. That's a good run. I think there they, they decoyed Terry on a little bit and, and, and Williams a nice hard run. You can see both both coaches are very prepared for this ball game. They know the magnitude of this game and, and, and it will very much dictate how their season ends up. Franklin. Snaps that ball out nicely to J.T. Lewis. Lewis will work forward. First down, Sandusky at the 39. J.T. Lewis, junior wide receiver at 6-2. Good target. He's had a good season, 16 receptions, couple of touchdowns and over 200 yards gathering in passes. So streaks on the move. Another nice nice read there by Franklin. Saw, saw Lewis open and got him the football quickly and, and right on the money. Stewart probing. Terry on Stewart driving forward. Gets to about the 35 yard line. Again, critical part of this ball game is going to be the line of scrimmage. Can that offensive line of Sandusky's work over that front four, front five of Clyde? Sandusky averaged about 260 across that front line. That's that's a you know that's a good run. That's a good hard run, four yards. And I think for both teams, if they can establish the run and get four or five yards a carry, three, four, five yards, they'll just move the ball right down the field and score. Second and six. Franklin wants to go up top, going deep, got a man! Just over the outstretched arms. He had a receiver out there. I believe that was Javante Roldan. Uh, he, he had, had him. him. He had him. A nice ball. Just overshot it a little bit. I like that move there. They, they started with nobody in the backfield. Then they brought Stewart in. It kind of confused the fly defense. And then they still go up top. It's just, just a few feet away from a, a quick striker there. Well, at the 35 with 2.45 remaining opening quarter, I got a sense that... Uh, Mike Franklin, the head coach for the Blue Streaks, is in four down territory here. Yeah, I think it's a little different now. We'll get positive yardage for sure here on third down. Third and five, they're gonna have to hurry inside of four, three, two, and they have to hurry on the play clock. They won't get it off. Official was a little tardy, now they'll throw the flag. Now they throw the flag. I didn't think initially they are gonna throw the flag. Sometimes you, they give you that split second, but. Just could not get it off. Yeah, you could see that one coming because that play was a little late and the fellas weren't set with six seconds to go. So that's a big five yards against the blue and white. Ken, you, you, you talked about 
penalties and, and thus far in this ball game, Sandusky's got three of them. Clyde's got none and, and all three have come at, at kind of costly times. So now you're third and 10. So now they'll empty the backfield. And now bring Stewart back in. Again, this is a third and 11 as Clyde will run six up at the line of scrimmage. Franklin up top again. Looking for Noah Caston over there at about the 15 yard line off his hands. So fourth down for the blue and white. And a man, man, good coverage right there by the um, Flyers. Yeah, that's a good secondary that uh, the Flyers have. I think that was Nick Webb on the coverage. Ball was there, but he, he kind of got him on the sidelines, pushed him out, and, and jarred that ball loose. Yeah, Nick Webb was first team all league last year, so he's a solid DB. So now we'll punt the ball away. Big, high, booming punt. And squeezing it at the 11 yard line will be Carson Riemann, and that's where the team from Sandusky County will scrimmage. The Clyde Flyers first and 10 with 2.29 remaining opening quarter. Well, you know, ironically, both possessions for the streaks, they get to, to the Clyde 40 and then they're, they're forced to punt. And this time a little bit better on the punt, doesn't go in the end zone, so they'll pin the Flyers back at, at about the 10 there. But a, a, a big possession here for both teams. Uh, Clyde, you know, to get a two possession, or get a score and get a two possession lead would be, would be huge. Strikes want to get the ball back quickly. On the far side, top of your screen goes Carson Riemann, but they're going to run inside again. This time the Sandusky defense gang tackles. Getting up off the bottom for the blue and white. That's going to be Daisy on right. Nice job right there by the Strix. Good, good job of, you know, probably defensive coaches talk to, talk to the defensive line there to try to stop that run, and a good job there on first down. Only got a yard or two. Lozier under center. Little blitz action and wrapping him up. Shooting through from that linebacking position was Rashawn Redding, one of the top tacklers for Sandusky this year as the senior is able to wrap up the ball carrier in the backfield. So that'll make third and nine. Good penetration that time by Redding. A great job by Redding. He shoots the gap. Nobody picked him up, and he just gets right to the running back. Now you put Clyde in the third and long, and they're going to have to throw the football. I don't believe they've thrown the ball yet today, tonight. Well, they're going to run trips to the top of the screen here as we're – Closing in on one minute opening quarter. This is the third and a long nine for Lozier. Quick out, looking for a block. That's not going to happen, though, that Sandusky defense was there. Xavier Parker. Excellent defensive stand there by Sandusky. Boy, that was just quickness right there for Parker to close down on that and, and shut it down for no gain. Now the streak should get pretty darn good field position. It's a crucial stop there. Almost a quarter into this ball game, and I think that's a momentum type stop for the streaks. Again, no wind here at uh, Strobel Field, Cedar Point Stadium. Again, temperature in the mid 50s, a perfect night for high school football. Nice crowd has made their way over from Clyde this evening. Seeing such warm temperature this fall, it's a perfect uh, <laughs> fall night, but I think a lot of people in the stands are probably freezing. Put that coat on and get out there and watch some football, partner. So, dangerous juggle the ball, there. very dangerous, but able to hold on at the 38-yard line. For a moment, I thought I saw a little football coming out of there by Carrion Keys. But it's it's great field position for, for the Strix to start their possession here. Dangerous to go get that football, but he held on. I don't believe he tried to fair catch it either. I think he just went and caught it. That's one of those situations where you have that opportunity to catch the ball, and if you don't, you're probably looking at another 15 yards going the other way. So a smart play, a good play, and Sandusky in business here at the Clyde 37. Outside, quick speed and a burst to the sideline. Run out of bounds again. There's that quickness of Desmond Williams, the sophomore at 165 pounds, shows that burst of speed. A very nice run there, 12 yards, and, and just he got to the outside and just kept going. 
And it's like uh, Sandusky's got, uh, when, when Stewart is, is gone, they've got a, they've got somebody right in the wings there to take over the helm running the football. Well, that's nice. going to do it in that first quarter is the Sandusky Blue Streaks, and Clyde will change ends, and Sandusky's on the move. But 12 minutes of football have been played here at Strobel Field, Cedar Point Stadium. You find the Clyde Flyers on top in this critical matchup of the Lake Division of the SBC. It's Clyde 7, Sandusky 0 here on BCSN. When it comes to getting sick, your body doesn't always wait for business hours. Introducing Firelands Virtual Care. When you're not feeling your best, Virtual Care allows you to speak online with a medical professional right away. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. And yes, at any time of the day or night. No appointment necessary. To get started, visit firelands.com slash virtual care to download our app. Care is just a click away. Teams exchanging ends. Get ready to go with second half action. And with us during the 2019 high school football season, our friends at Sandusky Door and Hearth. They are the area's most trusted garage door professionals. Sandusky Door and Hearth, glad to have them on board during this 2019 high school football season. Quarter number two, set to get underway. The streak's on the move as they'll scrimmage first and 10 from the Flyers 25. Got two men in the backfield now for streaks. Look, Williams working hard inside. That sophomore showing strong leg drive to move that pile to about the 21 yard line. A good hard run there again by Williams. I think there's so many guys keying on Stewart. Great job of the coaching staff of Sandusky to, to, to kind of decoy Stewart a little bit in the early going. So Mike Franklin uh, working that play into his offensive unit now. Stewart and Williams in the backfield. Again, out of the shotgun comes Franklin. Williams again, driving forward inside the 20 to about the 17 yard line. Once again, good hard work. And everybody's looking at four. No, 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 it's not gonna be four. It's gonna go the other way and let that sophomore run the football. You know what I'm liking about Williams is every time he's carrying the ball, he's falling forward. He's getting the extra couple yards. That's that's the sign of a good running back. When you're when you're gonna when you get hit, you fall forward, you keep going. A nice hard run again, and now third and short. Well, on this drive, the fellas up front, Pollard, Brown, Havens, Wright, and Mittower, they're starting to express themselves a little bit as they're digging in at that line of scrimmage and start to impose their will. Third and two. Stewart. Terry on Stewart cuts outside. Foot race touchdown, Terry on Stewart. Well, as soon as he go. made that cutback, my good man, that's six points, Sandusky, as he scores from 15 yards out. Like I said, he is fun to watch and, you know, got good blocking up front, but then he he, he found the hole, danced around a little bit and, and got in the end zone and a nice run there. I love the play calls, the decoy to Stewart, decoy to Stewart, and then all of a sudden they get, gets the ball and he goes to the end zone. So explosive, folks. When he makes that cut, plants, and goes the other direction, he leaves guys laying on the carpet. Franken for the PAT. I take that back, Sandusky has changed up now. They've gone with Isaac Rock, a sophomore, as he drills the uprights to his That's close. I, seven. I, I saw uh, quite a few uh, flyers almost getting in there, so. 10-25, uh, 10-25 remaining till halftime. The Sandusky Blue Streaks take advantage of that good field position, go 32 yards and they score. So even up at seven, high school football on BCSN.
Streaks not this thing up at seven apiece. And, you know, folks start thinking about Clyde and Sandusky playing football. They figure, well, they've only been doing it for a couple of years. But a uh, little twist for folks that uh, enjoy history. Sandusky and Clyde, they played football back in 1895. First wow. year Sandusky played football was the year 1895. And it was the Clyde Flyers, the Norwalk Truckers, and Fremont Ross were their three opponents in that inaugural season. And the Sandusky Blue Streaks won them all, but they started playing football. Dan Lindsley back in 1895. That is, that's crazy to think that. Think about that. That's what about 130 years ago. And you're talking about teams that uh, played football early in the 20th century, and then basically they stopped playing after about 1911. They just went in different directions and come back 100 plus years later. And guess what? They're in the same conference. They're only about 20 miles apart as far as schools go. And Hey, let's play ball. <laughs> you look at and you look at the, the history of both of these two programs. Oh my goodness! Wise. I mean, it, it's not only a great matchup around our area; it's a great matchup in the state of Ohio when you look at the history of these two programs. Ryan Carter now in season number seven, and boy, has he done well for the Flyers—a record of 61 and 19. Been in the playoffs six straight years under his direction. Ryan is a he's a he's a not only a great co coach but a class guy. At the 33, the quick out, trying to get a block, Extender. pursuit for Sandusky. Noah Cast in there along with Vinny D'Amico, I believe. I tell you what, we're playing football tonight. That's a great job right there by Nick Webb of catching that, spinning away. Xavier Parker blew that play and up. And then a though. great tackle. <laughs> I mean, a great tackle. So it's, it's on both ends. It's it's football. We got a 7-7 game. 14 minutes into it. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better so far. Second down, we're going to call it about eight. Hunter Golden in the backfield alongside of Ryan Lozier. Lozier will keep. Lozier will be stopped. He's grabbing him and Throwing him down is London Havens, a 255-pound senior, right there to make the tackle. Good job there by, by London, uh, just getting in the backfield. We're, we're seeing that more and more. Uh, the Sandusky uh, defensive line is, is, is doing a, a nice job at this point. Uh, that first drive by Clyde, they just ran the ball right down the field, but now all of a sudden, sudden Sandusky is starting to stop that and forcing Clyde to do some different things mentioned right at the top of the ball game one of the components in tonight's contest was going to be team speed overall so here's Clyde looking at a third and eight that's not going anywhere except down boy you talk about getting there in a hurry the blue streaks were all over that play defensively excellent job good good push up front again and, and that was a designed run it looked like for Lozier but uh, uh, a great job there by the streaks again. We've had Sandusky a couple of times here on BCSN, and having watched the streaks, they are difficult to beat if you try to go sideline to sideline with them because of their pursuit and their quickness. So Clyde tried to go wide, looking at a fourth and ten, and punt coming up here. I got to say this, and I don't want to jinx it, but I, I like how the way this game is being officiated too. They're they're letting them play. Pressure. Lozier will get that away, and that ball's just going to take the, the carpet rug. Look at it go, all the way down to the 20-yard line. So a great roll for Lozier and the Clyde Flyers. That's about 44 yards on that punt, no return. One thing about playing on the carpet, Dan, a lot of times you get that you get that roll, it takes off, and it's gone. Yeah, he got about 15, <laughs> 20 yards on that roll, and, and that's really big in the field position department. You know, instead of... Sandusky having it around 35, 40 yard line. Now they're at their, their own 19. So they gotta go <clears throat> the full length of the field here if they wanna get points on the board. So Michael Franklin run the offense, probing. Not too much going that time. I believe that was Desmond Williams on the carry. Job by the Flyers there, just like we were talking about Sandusky up front defensively. Clyde right there, they just swarmed to the football, not much going. Jeremiah Hasabine in on that tackle, 200 pound senior. So 
it's just a couple of yards. See if uh, who can who can get the next score here. I think puts themselves in a good position. Franklin, snap throw, able to get his receiver at the 32-yard line. So J.T. Lewis, the junior wideout, able to hook up with Franklin for that first down. I like that play. I'll tell you what I also liked about it is the snap that was put on that ball by Franklin. Yeah, he's done a great job. I, I, I love how he's getting rid of the football. He's finding the open guy. He's getting rid of it. He's firing it to him. He's put it on numbers pretty much every time. And, and good quick slant routes. I, I love the play calling. And, and Franklin, for a guy who probably had no clue he'd be a quarterback for Sandusky this year, is doing a wonderful job. So we're at the 32 with a uh, tick under seven minutes to go. Trying to get Terry on Stewart to the edge. And Clyde pursuing well. He's able to get just a couple of yards on that play. So good pursuit by the Flyers. He's able to wrap him up as uh, Derek Coleman, 183-pound senior linebacker. In fact, Derek leads the Flyers with 54 tackles on the season, so he's had an exceptional senior year. Excellent job there. The biggest key for Clyde, what you're trying not to do, is let Terrian get to the outside. He gets the outside, you're in deep trouble. But they kept him inside there and, and only got a few yards. Snusky will really jam it up on the short side of the field with three wide receivers. We'll go back the other way. That's going to be almost picked off. Boy, stepping in front of J.T. Lewis and coming up empty. But, boy, reading it well for Clyde was Andrew Bauer. He was there in and out of his hands. So a break for Sandusky. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be quiet now because we were just uh, giving Franklin a lot of credit for, for his accuracy and that one. He, he missed shot him. I know his receivers seemed to stop a little bit, but uh, boy, a, a break though for the streaks that that ball wasn't picked off. So you see the wide receivers and the running backs over getting the instructions from their coach as we're down to seven seconds on the play clock. Once again, they're going to have to hustle. Franklin. Through that a little too quick. He was trying to hook up with J.T. Lewis, but uh, got rid of that ball a little too quickly, so Sandusky will have to punt the ball away. But coming into this game, you, you don't know. You, you know both these teams are capable of putting up a lot of points, but you also know that both these teams are capable of making some big stops defensively and seen a little bit of both. We've seen some offense, and now we're starting to see the defense settle in. Usually it's the other way around, but uh, looks like we're going to have a heck of a ball game. This should get a nice roll here for Franklin. And there it goes. Nice roll as you see it going down to the 25, 4, 3 yard line. Boy, you got to love the rug if you're a punter, don't you? Well, we, we saw <laughs> it the last punt by the Flyers, and, and Sandusky got the same break there. So he gets about a 43 yard punt as it'll settle in at the 23 yard line of Clyde. Clyde Flyers, again, they are a Division Four school. They're number nine in their region, that being region number 14. They've got 333 boys in the top three grades. And in that region, it's Galleon, Wasion, Keystone, and Ottawa Glandorf, one through four for the Flyers. Such a tough, that's a very, very tough region. Settling in underneath the defense and picking up positive yards to about the 29. Reception being made by Caden Olson. I like that play call. They haven't really thrown a ball downfield at all in this game. They haven't thrown the ball very much, and I like that first down, kind of surprised Sandusky. Yeah, and it's a safe pass, too. Yes. Safe pass for about six, seven yards. They're at the 30 as we're inside of five and a half here in quarter number two. Good positive yardage on first down. Lozier once again taking a peek to the sidelines. We're down to five seconds on the play clock. I don't think he's aware of it. In fact, he's not going to get it off. So it's going to be a delay of game yeah, on the too Flyers. Too much time there. Now we've seen two delay of games. Both teams have got one. A lot of times these coaches will send plays in, and they're a little tardy. And you know these aren't college or pro guys. It takes them just a couple more seconds to get set and make sure everybody's where they're supposed to be. Yeah, and that, that's a... 
you know, it's a great spot. You're in second and three, so you're probably, hey, what do we do here? Should we go for a big play? Uh, and, and, and it took a little while to develop. Now all of a sudden you're second and eight. Mosier, quick out and able to complete it out to about the 33 yard line is his favorite receiver, Nick Webb. Webb's Nick got Webb, 60 receptions on the season. He can do it all. I mean, he's ran the ball a few times. He, he can catch it. Um, and a nice pass there by Lozier. Got what they needed first down. Yeah, he's a good one. He is a good one for sure. So the sticks are moved to the 33 inside of five minutes here, second quarter. Lozier under center. They're going to run Webb. Ball's loose. Bumble! Sandusky's going to come up with it. Down the sideline goes JT Lewis. And JT Lewis will score. I don't see any flags on the field. Opportunistic, the Sandusky Blue Streak's able to jump on that fumble and able to pick it up and score for the blue and white is JT Lewis. You know, when you've got a, two pretty evenly matched teams, you're tied up almost near halftime, what's what's the big thing that, the one thing that can kill you is turnovers. Turnovers right there at all. That's huge for the Sandusky Blue Streaks. He's able to go 33 yards on the fumble recovery. And then capitalize. And nice job by Lewis to, to not only pick that up, but then take off down the sideline. So Roop will go with the extra point again on the hold Henry. And he'll split the upright again. So the Sandusky Blue Streak capitalized on that fumble. Into the end zone goes JT Lewis. And with five, excuse me, four, 21 remaining till half. You see the Sandusky Blue Streak, they're on top. 14-7 high school football right here on BCSN. Opportunity by Sandusky, they pick it up, score that touchdown by J.T. Lewis, and suddenly they're on top 14-7 as Franklin gets set to kick this one away. That's a huge momentum swing for the streaks. So Lozier will come out to the 20 and be knocked down right about the 22-yard line. So the Flyers, Clyde High School, will take over with 4.15 remaining till half. If, if you're Clyde, you can't let that affect you. I, I know on the fumble, Webb was, was hunched over, upset with himself, I'm sure. But you got the football back. You just got to drive down the field and, and try to tie it up. If you're, if you're the Flyers, you got all three timeouts. If you're the Streaks, getting a stop here would be would huge. be huge. In motion, Berger. So we're going to run the football this time with Lozier. He's going to break a tackle across the 30. Going to be stepping out of bounds, though. Solid gain for the Clyde Flyers. You know, the key to all this, we've seen some nice, solid 12, 15-yard runs when they get, when whether it be the Flyers or Streaks, whoever gets to the outside, it, you're usually going to get big yardage. And right there, Lozier did a nice job. Well, at 14-7, Clyde still can maintain their game plan. Obviously, that's one of these situations where you want to be able to mix it up a little bit. And again, Lozier, a very efficient quarterback, throwing the football, just uh, around 1,000 yards throwing. As he'll look to step back, pressure. Big pressure coming from the inside, and that's going to be 
Out of bounds, just out of bounds. Out Trying of bounds. to put the feet on the sideline was Nick Webb, but I'll tell you, quarterback Ryan Lozier was under heat. Yeah, yeah that was uh, London Havens who made a bit, couple big tackles earlier who got pressure on Lozier and just made him throw the ball a little quicker than he wanted to and, and a great job there. Well, that's one thing London Havens has is good foot speed at 255 pounds. That he can really play havoc if you try to get wide on him because he can really cover ground. Second and 10. Trying to run the football, a couple of yards. As the streaks again, gang tackling. I've been really impressed after that first drive of the Flyers. I've been impressed and that defensive line and, and linebackers of the streaks just shutting down that running game on the inside. Again, a critical component if Sandusky can stop inside action. They're very, very difficult to beat on the edge. Third and seven here for Lozier and the Clyde Flyers here. There's three and a half to go till intermission. Looking for the quick out. Into pressure, and that's going to go incomplete. He was looking for Caden Olson, and that ball will go incomplete. So fourth down at the 37. So pretty, pretty good say, coverage there, Ken. Yes, it was. So that'll be a punting situation. The Sandusky will send back single return. That's going to be uh, Desmond Williams. A big stop for Sandusky. They have all three of their timeouts and still plenty of time here. Good snap, pressure up the middle. High kick, not too deep, better watch out. That took a straight bounce. Sure did, but I'll tell you, that ball was close to Kenny McCarty. He didn't even see that football. Yeah. <laughs> but like you said, Sandusky gets a favorable roll, and they're going to spot the ball at about the 37-yard line. Streaks with three timeouts remaining. Plenty of time to work the clock, so opportunity for the blue and white here, leading by seven. That's one of those ones that hang up there a little bit, and, and the, you know, usually it's one of your blockers that you know, needs to get out of the way because that could have been uh, very dangerous. Terion Stewart looking. Stewart able to break a couple of tackles, get out across the 42, always dangerous. Doesn't matter if he's inside the tackles or on the edge. You hold your breath when number four gets the football. Well, now that the streaks have the lead, I think you're gonna see a lot more of Terion Stewart here at the end of this half and into the second half because he's one of those guys, it's, it's hard to stop him from getting four or five yards every time he touches it. He came into the ball game. Uh, just under 1,000 yards, he'll be over that by now. 16 touchdowns on the season, 77 touchdowns in his career. I'll that say that again. Amazing stats. I'll say that again, 77 touchdowns in his career. Terrion, Stewart gets the first down. He gets to that corner and he's always looking, always probing and see if he can get a step on the uh, DB. It's just, he's one of those guys, it, it takes more than one guy to tackle. You gotta have two or three guys around him and you know he's starting to heat up now he has that explosion you look for in a quality running back he can plant the foot make the cut in full acceleration but again he, number four has had some issues with the ankle this season right from the beginning of the season it's one of those things I'm sure the young man will deal with through the rest of this 2019 campaign as he'll settle in behind Franklin with two minutes remaining Stewart Terion Stewart there. running hard across the 45, really down close. to the 44. Okay, just, I'm still enamored by that stat of 77 touchdowns for the young man. I mean, that is that is crazy. Yeah, and I also let's just throw in over 5,000 yards rushing while we're at it. That's not bad. <laughs> That's unbelievable are, statistics. Yes, they are, they, especially when you're playing an eight-game regular season. Yeah, that, or, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, a 10-game regular season. I think the word is gaudy. Just superb. So they'll empty the backfield here with a second and two. Franklin gets pressure up the middle. It comes that area where they're going to call holding on Sandusky again. Well, that could be a tough that, penalty on the streaks. That has been a problem for the blue streaks. 
and I got a feeling that uh, Josh Mittower was the one that's upset with the call. Josh showed a, quite a bit of emotion on that when uh, the flag was thrown. That's a tough call, because you're at second and one, and now you get backed up here. Especially when you look time, 76 seconds to go and a half. Now you, you still have all three timeouts. So we're back to the 42 yard line here. They must be facing a second down, 17. I think Mike Franklin, is he gonna call a timeout here? I think he will and he has. So Mike Franklin will stop play at uh, 116 to try to get that offensive unit regrouped. You know, I question that, you got the hold and they were second and one, so I would think it should be second and 11 here, but they moved that ball back, it's about second and 15 for the streaks. Well, the Blue Streaks, again, they are a Division three school, and they're in a region that's got a couple of powerhouse teams, and you're talking Norwalk and Mansfield, 1-2. Sadusky's played both of those teams and has been defeated by both the Tigers and the Truckers. But the Streaks are in a position to where if they win a couple of more ball games, I tend to think that they're going to, even if it's 8-2 and two or 7-3, and three, possibly make it into that, uh, that group of eight. Yeah, I mean, what... You can look at Sandusky go, oh, they're five and two, but they played <laughs> probably two of the best teams in, in North Central Ohio this year and, and, and got beat to those two teams and played them, played them hard. Yeah, they know, sit so. number four uh, in Region 10. It's Norwalk, Mansfield, Holy Name, one, two, and three. Tiffin, Columbia, and they sit at number seven in the region with the Blue Streaks. Second and 15. Another yeah, holding penalty, penalty. Comes yeah. out. It's another holding penalty. That's going to be whistled on the blue streaks again. Yeah, I thought I saw the hold. Uh, Lyman reached his hand out and kind of grabbed the jersey of the of Clyde Flyer defender. So let's go back another 10. And what looked like a very promising drive has suddenly got the blue streaks heading north to Sandusky Bay right now. But here's the interesting thing, Ken. Clyde has all three of their timeouts. So, you know, Sandusky running the football here to try to, you know, get you to half. Uh, more than likely, you're going to see the Flyers use their timeouts. Well, now they're backed up to, what, the 29-yard line, and they're a second down, and they've got to get almost to Perkins Avenue now to get this first down. Call it 30 to go. Once again, do they stay aggressive on the offensive side of the ball? Terry on Stewart. Trying to get to that corner, and I mean try to get to the corner, but hanging on there was Andrew Bauer, that 160 pound junior defensive back. So you see it, Ryan Carter quickly stops the play here for Clyde with 104 remaining. He wants that football back. Well, I still think that's a, if you're the streets, you get these two penalties that back you up. It kind of kills this drive. I think that's still a smart thing to run with Stewart. You never know if he can break that, uh, break a run or, or anything else. And at least you're going to make Clyde use some of their timeouts. So if you do have to punt the football back to them, they're going to be out of time or they'll only have one timeout left if, if Sandusky does run the ball here. You know, we're talking about Norwalk and the, the squad they have over there. That is a very, very good Division Three team. From last year's group, they, they went all the way to the Final Four. You look at that ball club, Dan, they have all five offensive linemen back from last season. All right, take that into consideration. But what I find amazing is, is that they're, they're running back. Stump, okay. Tremendous year for that young man. What's he got right now on the season? I think he's somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,500 yards, talking to Evan Stump. That young man only carried the football 17 times last year. Yeah. 17 times. Now he comes into his senior year. He's got 1,500 yards, 18 touchdowns through seven games. What's well, that tell you about that offensive line? That's a, that's a, a wonderful <laughs> offensive line. And, and the, the thing with Norwalk is, is they're not one-dimensional. They can throw it. Oh, big uh, time. Their quarterback, Chafin, is a, is a good quarterback. And... And they got receivers all over the place. But what's been great <coughs> and is, athletes. Yeah, but you know? great is there's been a little pressure on Chapin because they've got that running game, and Garrett's got 1,100 yards throwing the ball. So they got a great balance over there through the truckers, and they're going to be a tough out. They're going to be a very difficult team to beat. I know they and Mansfield got together first game of the season, and that was uh, quite a contest as well. 
So here he goes, Sandusky gonna work that clock, make them burn their last, or burn their second time out, which they will. Well, that, you know, that when you're talking about Norwalk and Mansfield, and then you, you look at these two teams, Clyde and Sandusky, they come in five and two each. And we, you know, they, their losses are against such good teams. Yeah, Clyde lost to St. Francis out of Toledo, and I think they're uh, they're five and two, six and one, and they play in the track. And that's a Division One, Division Two league. <clears throat> so tonight was exciting for us because yes. because of the, these two teams playing such tough competition, and and both of them have the work cut out for them because they're not over with tough competition for the rest of the way out. But you know, we were going to really find out, you know where these two teams stack up. And somebody, whoever loses this game, is really in a, is gonna be in a tough position to make the playoffs, especially if it's Clyde. The Clyde Flyers, they'll, uh, they've still got to play Norwalk week nine, and they go up against their good buddies from Bellevue in week 10, and those are gonna be <laughs> two tough games for the Flyers. But right now, the streaks are gonna punt this football away. Clyde looks like they're gonna go after it. Able to nice turn punt. that ball over and then some. Boy, you talk about a nice punt by Franklin. That was a beauty. 42 yards, no return. It's Michael Franklin. Well, good Definitely. job, too, by Caden Olson to fly just a fair catch that, not let that hit the carpet like we talked about and get that roll. But what, what a nice punt by Franklin. Yeah. 42, no return inside of a minute to go and one timeout remaining for Ryan Carter and the Clyde Flyers. So they're going to force Sandusky to have to play some defense here in this last minute. Well, Clyde does not have time to kind of dink and duck. They're going to have to go. They're going to have to try to get something downfield at some point. Again, Ryan Lozer, he's found the end zone nine times this year throwing the football. 1,000 yards passing. Pressure coming out. Backside, he's under duress. Good job of throwing it away. Yeah. Nice pressure again by London Havens. I, I tell you what, he, he, we we'll keep calling his name. He's all over the quarterback. And I'll tell you, Daisy on right was in pursuit as well. Daisy on it, 210 pound linebacker. He'd get there in a hurry as well. You know, those types of plays when you're a defensive lineman, that just, that fuels you because you're, you're so close and so you want to give it even more the next possession or next play. Take a peek to the side here as we're down to five seconds on the play clock. Lozier will keep. Streak doing a little ball hawking there. We'll go to the 35 and looks like yeah, Clyde will stop here. the clock one more time. That was an interesting call. It was interesting all the way around. Clyde lines up all three receivers on the short side of the field. The, the wide side of the field was wide open. Interesting, you got a left-handed quarterback here too, and I've noticed that Ryan likes to roll to his right and throw across his body, but he does have good arm strength. We mentioned this is uh, week week eight and the Sandusky Blue Streaks. They're gonna have to go to Bellevue week nine and then finish up with their rival just uh, down the street there on Campbell Street. That'll be the Perkins Pirates. Well, we mentioned just a few moments ago, Norwalk and Bellevue remain for Clyde. Now here's the interesting part of this half here. Clyde's out of timeouts. They got a third down and five. Sandusky still has all three of their timeouts. Uh, you know, if, if Clyde doesn't get a first down, I, I would not be surprised to see Sandusky use a timeout if they need to. Try to get the ball back. Clyde needs four. Lozier. Looking deep. Now he'll tuck and he'll run and he'll squeeze out the first down as he's able to get out just across the 40 yard line and that's enough to move the chains. Nice job there by Ryan Lozier. Uh, you could see he's an experienced guy. He read to play, took as much time as he could to get a pass downfield, but then was able to just take and get the first down himself. Now they need some quick stuff here. Not able to get out of bounds over there on the far side was Carson Riemann, and that'll continue to roll the clock as we're down inside of 20 seconds. Really, that's a big play for the streaks. Yeah. Keep them in bounds, keep that clock running, and then Lozier's gonna spike it. But, uh, yeah, we got, what, 14 seconds remaining, and 
Second down, tough in high school football. They're gonna have to throw this ball deep. Yep. I think what you're looking at here is try to get a pass play where you get 15, 20 yards, get out of bounds, and give yourself one shot at the end zone. I, I, I don't think, uh, unless I can get down near the 10, 15 yard line, I don't, I don't think a field goal is in order, but. Uh, well, when you're talking field goals though, you're gonna talk about uh, uh, Guzman Moreno. That young man's got a leg, partner. <laughs> Well, then maybe, maybe, maybe all you got to do is get to 25, 30 yard line here. Let's see. Well, there's some pressure again on the back side. And down he goes. Number 55 there again, London Havens wreaking havoc on the Clyde Flyers here tonight. Is that's going to do it for the first half of football as both teams will head to the respective locker rooms as 24 minutes of football completed here at Strobel Field, Cedar Point Stadium as the Blue Streaks of Sandusky find themselves on top. 14-7 as you watch high school football right here on BCSN. Both teams have hit the clubhouse as it's halftime at Strobel Field, and right now the marching band of Clyde High School has taken the field. And 
I'm not sure he might be on the other team. school has the most spirit if you do and it's true prove it send us pics or video of your hype football student section on twitter and tag us using hashtag bcsne get creative and show your spirit weekly winners will be presented with cool shades thanks to dewey furniture on november 8th one lucky school with the most energy creativity submissions and school spirit will be crowned season winner and be presented with Dewey Furniture Football Student Section of the Season Championship Belt. Follow BCSN Erie on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for rules and how to enter. Let the games be.
think your school has the most spirit? If you do, and it's true, prove it. Send us pics or video of your hype football student section on Twitter and tag us using hashtag BCSNE. Get creative and show your spirit. Weekly winners will be presented with cool shades thanks to Dewey Furniture. On November 8th, one lucky school with the most energy, creativity, submissions, and school spirit will be crowned season winner and be presented with the Dewey Furniture Football Student Section of the Season Championship Bell. Follow BCSN Erie on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for rules and how to enter. Let the games begin. Halftime continues here at Strobel Field, Cedar Point Stadium, as the Sandusky High School Marching Band has taken the field. school has the most spirit if you do and it's true prove it send us pics or video of your hype football student section on twitter and tag us using hashtag bcsne get creative and show your spirit weekly winners will be presented with cool shades thanks to dewey furniture on november 8th one lucky school with the most energy creativity submissions and school spirit will be crowned season winner and be presented with the dewey furniture football student section of the season championship bell follow bcsn erie on facebook twitter and instagram for rules and how to enter let the games begin Think your school has the most spirit? If you do, and it's true, prove it. Send us pics or video of your hype football student section on Twitter and tag us using hashtag BCSNE. Get creative and show your spirit. Weekly winners will be presented with cool shades. 
to Dewey Furniture. On November 8th, one lucky school with the most energy, creativity, submissions, and school spirit will be crowned season winner and be presented with the Dewey Furniture Football Student Section of the Season Championship Bell. Follow BCSN Erie on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for rules and how to enter. Let the games begin. When it comes to getting sick, your body doesn't always wait for business hours. Introducing Firelands Virtual Care. When you're not feeling your best, Virtual Care allows you to speak online with a medical professional right away. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. And yes, at any time of the day or night. No appointment necessary. To get started, visit firelands.com slash virtual care to download our app. Care is just a click away.
think your school has the most spirit? If you do, and it's true, prove it. Send us pics or video of your hype football student section on Twitter and tag us using hashtag BCSNE. Get creative and show your spirit. Weekly winners will be presented with cool shades thanks to Dewey Furniture. On November 8th, one lucky school with the most energy, creativity, submissions, and school spirit will be crowned season winner and be presented with the Dewey Furniture Football Student Section of the Season Championship Belt. Follow BCSN Erie on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for rules and how to enter. Let the games begin. Think your school has the most spirit? If you do, and it's true, prove it. Send us pics or video of your hype football student section on Twitter and tag us using hashtag BCSNE. Get creative and show your spirit. Weekly winners will be presented with cool shades thanks to Dewey Furniture. On November 8th, one lucky school with the most energy, creativity, submissions, and school spirit will be crowned season winner and be presented with the Dewey Furniture Football Student Section of the Season Championship Belt. Follow BCSN Erie on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for rules and how to enter. Let the games begin.
Welcome back to Strobel Field. Alongside Dan Lindsley, Ken Walters, bringing you this ball game between the Flyers and the Blue Streaks. Sandusky on top, 14-7 intermission. And in the game tonight, Clyde got on top early, 5-16 to go. First quarter, they took that ball 80 yards in eight plays as quarterback Lozier went in for the touchdown. While the Streaks, they came back, great field position. Five plays, able to go 32 yards and tie it up on a 15-yard run by Terion Stewart. And then the Streaks took full advantage of a fumble recovery as J.T. Lewis took it in for six points with 4.20 to go in the first half. And the Streaks lead by that amount at 14-7. Not a lot of offense here yet, uh, Dan Lindsley, but a lot of football yet to be played. Yeah, and in a big possession here, I always think the first possession of the second half is really big, especially in a close ball game for Clyde. Uh, I think it's so important for them to get down the field and get a score. And for the streaks, a, a stop could really put them in a good position to finish this thing out. Well, the Flyers will get the ball out to the right side. That's uh, William Lozier returning it out to about the 28-yard line. In that first half, Sanusky Blue Streaks at 147 yards of offense. Clyde was able to squeeze out 117. And Terion Stewart, uh, nine carries, 52 yards, while his counterpart, Gunner Golden, was uh, five carries for 51 for, for Gunner. Franklin, five of 11, throwing the football for 53 yards, while Lozier was six of 10 for 28. So pretty fairly evenly matched yep. first half. The big turnover by Clyde was, was kind of the difference in that first half of play. Well, see what adjustments both these coaches have made as we get set to go here, the second half just underway. At the 28. A couple of yards and that's gonna be about it. As once again, the Sandusky defense was in there leading the charge with J.J. Henry. Nice job there, uh, Jeremiah Johnson got in there sure did. and put some pressure on, and, and again, the streaks uh, start the second half. Nice job up front. Snooky goes with four down line, but you can see those backers, they're, they're really crowding in now. Clyde looks like they're in that run formation, but we'll go quick out. Picked off. Oh boy. boy, you talk about stepping in, reading it all the way for an easy six, Desmond Williams. He knew that was coming, and right. he said, I got six for you guys. That was a great job. He just read the quarterback's eyes. Pass was a little bit late. He stepped right in front, and Desmond Williams, who ran the ball well for the streaks in the first half, now it's on the defensive side. That's a huge play to start the second half. Boy, you're right about Ryan Lozier. He locked on that receiver, and he didn't realize that locking on him, too, was number 29. So six points, Sandusky, and boom, streaks up 20-7 to seven here in a heartbeat. That just uh, the turnover game, we talked about it. That was what hurt Clyde in the first half, and, and, it, and it kills him here. Two turnovers, both returned for touchdowns. So extra point coming here by Isaac Roop. Good snap. And Isaac three for three here for Sandusky. So played 45 seconds. And the Sandusky Blue Streaks open this thing up to 21-7. Again, we mentioned uh, this is week eight and you gotta start taking computer points. And the Sandusky Blue Streaks being a division three school, again, they play in a very tough region. They can pick up a boatload of points against a good Clyde team who comes in here. They are a division four squad. But while we got a moment, Dan, let's take a quick look around the state of Ohio. We're talking division three, division four. In our Division Three level, you got top, you got New Philadelphia, Jonathan Alder out of Plain City, and Bishop Hartley, but that Mansfield team, which is in the region with Sandusky's, sitting at four in Norwalk, they've come in with enough points to be number 12 in their division. While the uh, Clyde Flyers being Division Four, Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Wyoming is the number one team in the state, followed by Perry and Newark Licking Valley. Those are your top three. And those, you talk about that Wyoming ball club out of Cincinnati, they're real good. And we mentioned uh, the other divisions, five, the Oak Harbor Rockets. Uh, I've seen them on BCSN. They're very good. <laughs> They're very, very strong, good. Very strong program in the, in the Bay Division of the SBC. And certainly they're going to be, the last couple of weeks, they're going to be the prohibitive favorites to close out that Bay Division. That should be interesting. And we have a lot of teams in the area uh, here that uh, are very much in, in good position to be in the playoffs and, and make runs in the playoffs. Oh, good tackle. I mean, you talk about locking somebody up and putting them down. That was Xavier Parker. 
So on the return that time was Robbie Green's layup, but he got nothing out of that. So Clyde, opportunity now, down 21-7. See what they can do, uh, second possession. Uh, it's interesting to kind of look at the sidelines. Uh, Sandusky's got a lot of momentum, a lot of energy, and, and, and Clyde looks to be down on themselves a little bit here with the two turnovers. See if they can change, change that course. Move Webb to the strong side of the field. He'll run up inside. So trying to drag tacklers for some positive yards out close to the 35-yard line. That's Gunner Golden. Good hard run there. Uh, and still pretty good pursuit by Sandusky, but uh, that was Golden that made, you know, got, you probably should only had a couple yards. He got, he got three or four more just by turning them legs and not going down. Second and three. And look to run up the middle. Golden again. He's going to get the first down and more as Clyde's going basic football right now in these two plays between the tackles. Sandusky had J.J. Henry in there. That's just good push from the offensive line of Clyde and, and, and Golden again running hard. Yeah, you go at Sandusky offensively. You want to go at them between the tackles and, and straight up the field because we mentioned it earlier, Dan. They're tough to beat on the corners. Yep, you're exactly right, and they've done a nice job up front for the most part tonight, but uh, I, I think Clyde's just trying to figure out what works that consistently enough that they can get down the field now that you're down two scores. Nice, nice play here. They're able to get positive yards and then some as they use Carson Riemann on that little slant back across the middle, but good ball fake by Ryan Lozier to get the first down. Really good play call, and we haven't seen that play all night. I think that was a good one uh, that, that just – Got them some blockers downfield, easy pass and catch. And then you get about 12 yards. Yeah. Clyde quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Lozier. There's your cuts back. Breaks outside of the 40. It's a foot race to the corner. And he's going to step out of bounds as in pursuit was J.J. Henry. But nice piece of running that time by Ryan Lozier. Yeah, and Ryan's rushed for 300 yards on the season, showed yeah. good foot As speed. As a quarterback, he's like almost your second or third running back. I mean, that's that was not only a nice job of getting good positive yardage, but a great cutback and a great ability to see the hole. Almost made it all the way to the end zone, but finally was cut down. And guess what? Mike Franklin, the Snusky Blue Streaks, will call timeout. Is that offensive? The Flyers showing some enthusiasm. They'll kick to the other side of the field now as Franklin will bring his defense over. So important if you're Clyde to get a score here because you get the ball back to Sandusky you know who they're going to you know and 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 Terion Stewart 14 point lead halfway through the third quarter I think it's 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 almost imperative for the Flyers to get in the end zone if they want to give themselves a chance in this football game if you're if Sandusky you're trying to get a stop here get Big another time. turnover you talk Clyde football, Sandusky football with the Clyde Flyers. They've been in the playoffs the last six years. Their record is 21 and 13, been in the playoffs 14 times, and they've won it all. Back in 1995, they were state champions. Ryan Carter was a part of that ball club yeah, back in 95. I believe Chad Long was a good defensive Whoa. back in that ball club. They had a heck of a team back in the mid-90s. First and 10, they're going to run wide and big yardage, and then some. Just tripped up is going to be Ryan Lozier. Boy, he got some good blocking on the right side. Just tripped up or he was in the end zone for six. And this is the way you want your club to answer a touchdown, come right back and get six on the board. This Clyde probably knocking on the a, door. You know, they haven't put the ball in the end zone yet, but this has probably been the best drive of the, of the ball game for Clyde. It's, first drive was very good, too. Yeah, that was the one they won 80 yards in that first quarter. But they are in business here. They are first and goal at the seven. up yards we're going to stand everybody up there good, good push there by the defensive line of the streaks and golden gets nothing but what, what i like about this drive for for the flyers they've switched it up where they're going who's who's got the football whether it be gunner golden or lozier or the screen pass to ryman uh, um you know just changing everything up and i think that 
that's caught Sandusky off guard a little bit and it's helped the Flyers move the football down the field. Second and goal, nothing. Able to wrap up Ryan Lozier at about the five yard line as that blue streak front four stiffens up. Also those linebackers filling in. Williams in there for Sandusky. I'll tell you what, Desmond Williams. In a hurry. <laughs> he's, you know, he had the, the pick six there just moments ago, and he's made some nice plays defensively. He ran the ball really well in the first half of when they kind of used Stewart as a decoy. And you got to really admire him, just a sophomore, coming up really big in this ball game, Desmond Williams. Third and goal. They're sitting at the five. Probably four down territory, you would think, at this point for Clyde. I don't know if field goal is going to do you much good. Going to go nothing. Just a yard, maybe two for, for Gunner. So here you are, fourth down. They have put the ball in the middle of the field. See where the referee spots this. Going to be at about the four-yard line. Good job there, Vinny D'Amico. Um, for the streaks, just getting down low and, and not letting Golden move forward. And it's a big fourth down, but I, I don't see any real reason if you're Clyde to, to take field goal at this point. Midway through the, the third quarter, you're down 14. You need to get in the end zone. Huge play. Go motion Berger. Lozier looking. He's not going to get it. As the Sandusky defense is there, and number 55 again, London Havens wraps him up, and Clyde comes away empty. I'm not so sure if you were to, to get an MVP of this ball game, Havens wouldn't be the guy. He's been all over the place defensively tonight. Well, the Clyde Flyers, they had to go 72 yards to get to the end zone. They won 69, and that was it as the Blue Streak defense comes up big with seven minutes remaining here in the third quarter to deny Clyde that touchdown opportunity. So how does Sandusky come out of this now? Field position at the five. Boy, a, a nice time consuming drive in, into the end zone for the streaks would be, uh, probably be lights out at that point. Well, you gotta be careful. This young man right there, oh, tackled at the nine. Again, folks, if you haven't seen Terry on Stewart play, number four, when he gets the ball, you hold your breath. As you saw right there, he was just about a horse collar away from getting big yardage right there. Yeah, that looked close to being a horse, horse collar, uh, but uh, you know, Stewart, is, he, he's just fun to watch. I mean, I, I, I could sit here all night and watch him carry the football. Second and five, they'll empty the backfield. Kind of surprised by this. Oh, well, now Stewart's coming back. They've done this a number of times, Stewart come back in the backfield, kind of disguise things. Terry on Stewart up the middle. Terry on Stewart. Stewart to the 25. He was hit right about the 20, and that slowed him down just enough that the other DB could come in and make the tackle, or folks, that he was on his way for six. As soon as he gets that open space, it's like instant speed. And that's just that's just power running. And, and you know, he's got it all though. He's a power runner, but he's got so much speed. Yeah, it's that first step. And his explosive. eyes and ability to see the hole Very for a high school runner. kid is, is amazing. Now they'll spot it at the 25. Pick up was 15. Boy, tough inside running that time by Desmond Williams. I, I, I love this Williams kid too. I mean, I mean, how cool is that when you're a sophomore? He's running hard, a little, little, comes up a little gimpy right there, but uh, I mean, as a sophomore to be able to run behind Stewart and then learn from him, and he's running hard tonight. Well, he got a tough six yards inside the tackles. This third quarter continues to move along at a brisk pace as we're closing in on five minutes now. Two backs for Franklin. Desmond Williams, oh, that time the Clyde Flyers all over. Not one helmet, but three. Nice job it's like there leading that Flyers. charge. Who'd you get? I had number 59 in there, that being uh, Norman, Remington Norman. Yep, yeah, Remington Norman, it looked like Jer Jeremiah Hallbison also was in on that tackle. And, and finally, a little bit of push from, from the Flyers' defensive line. So passing situation for the blue and white. And I think that's what you want. If you're Clyde, you want to get the streaks in a passing situation. Um, 
if you're if you're Sandusky, you're very content running the ball with Williams and, and Stewart and, and trying to take it all the way down the field, but a big third down here. We're going to give Terion Stewart to the outside, and the Clyde Flyers pursue him well and bring him down. Leading the charge was Caden Berger. So the blue and white will punt this one away as we'll be inside of four minutes here in the third when Franklin gets the snap. Excellent coverage there, or excellent tackle by Berger. That's not an easy task to take Stewart out. I mean, he got a little bit to the outside, yes, he but he did. couldn't turn the corner, and that's a, that's a big tackle. Probably a, a game-saving like tackle for, for Clyde in terms of getting the football back. Let's see if the Flyers go return on this. All indications are they're thinking punt return. As we're down to five seconds, Franklin's gonna have to hustle up. Does it nice booms one to about Franklin. to 38 and a fair catch is caught for very quickly by William Lozier, younger brother of quarterback Ryan. So Clyde will take possession. They're at their 38 yard line and that's where they'll scrimmage from. Talk about teams that have been in the playoffs quite a few times, the Sandusky Blue Streaks. There's another team that's had a lot of playoff experience over the years. You go back to the 1970s, Jim Caldwell was the coach back then when the, the playoffs first got started and you move to Jim Caldwell and you go on to Larry Cook and now Mike Franklin. They have, uh, they've been to the playoffs a few times, have the Sandusky Blue Streaks. In fact, uh, so I think the last four years in a row. Four they in have a row had now. some very good teams here the last couple of years. Out pattern, that's gonna be incomplete. I guess who was in the backfield there again to kind of <laughs> hustle that throw, man. Double nickels. London, London Havens. <laughs> yeah, he does He does put a little pressure on a QB, that's for darn sure. Uh, they've tried to run that out route a few times and they're just not in sync on it, close, but you know, that pressure that Havens and, and company have provided for the streaks have just thrown that passing game of the Flyers off quite a bit. Second and 10. Lozier looking for a quick pass, and he's able to complete that and get more close to the first down. It might be Carson Riemann. Spot of the football looks to be at about the 45, so a couple yards short. They just kind of saw a cushion there and just got the ball to Riemann real quickly and got a seven or eight yards and makes it a third and a lot more manageable. Gunner Golden, second effort, and that's gonna get him the first down. Initial contact stopped him, but he was able to drive forward and push the pile for the first down, so move the change for the Flyers. Good job of driving his feet there and falling forward. If he doesn't do that, he's gonna be short of the marker and he gets the first down. Down 21-7, Sandusky is thinking, okay, Clyde, you want to beat us, take the ball the length of the field on the ground, chew up some clock. Run this pattern before and they've had success with it inside, finding some running room. Like that play with Carson Riemann. Great job by Riemann, that ball was kind of thrown behind him and just a great job of getting it, catching the football first and then still getting positive yardage. A lot of times guys start to look upfield and that ball being behind them, they drop it, but he did a nice job of making sure he got the catch first. One more look to the side. Golden stood up inside. Nice play yeah, there. Leading the charge for Sandusky was Jeremiah Johnson. Jeremiah, 255 pound senior down lineman. That was uh, Jeremiah Johnson was like a brick wall right <laughs> there and, and Golden is not a, uh, a small character no. himself but he hit that wall pounds. yeah he hit that wall and and there was not much more to that third and one they go golden again and he'll squeeze out the first down now we got a flag coming in a number of flags i don't know what we got going on coming here. in from Late the hits. secondary 
so referees will huddle up. That, those came in late, Dan. Yeah, I'm not sure. Sandusky looked like was clapping. I don't know if an offensive lineman or somebody after the plate, you know, got excessive. Right there, they're telling uh, Ryan Lozier to back off as they're going to discuss this. But this pretty been a pretty clean football game yes, penalty-wise. So here he comes. Looks like a dead ball foul. And that's going to be against Sandusky, too. Yeah, so we'll just offset those. Offsetting the net. That's probably what happened. Two guys got him, went went hard at it after the whistle. And I like the, the fact that they got, got that taken care of and, and didn't penalize either of the two teams on it. Fair enough. First down for Clyde, the chains are being moved now as the ball rests at the 41. Down to 90 seconds to go here in the third. Clyde started this possession at their own 37. Lozier got plenty of time, trying to go outside. Breaking all kinds of tackles and moving forward is Nick Webb. That time the Blue Streaks are up there trying to tackle him high, did not get anyone down around those legs and Webb able to pick up a first down. You know, Webb, I thought he was he was going to maybe get a yard at best, and he just kept the feet moving. Now, I know he fumbled that football in the first half, and I think, you know, he's he wants a big play. Well, there is an example of tackling a good ball carrier up high and just drove right through those arm tackles. First and 10, they're at the 30. Lozier going to keep. He stays in bounds. He gets five. Yeah, so give him positive yards as he'll step out of bounds and stop the clock. Well, I, I really think that this possession is, is really for Clyde. If they want to give themselves a chance, they have got to get in the end zone. They get all the way down to the three or four last possession and a big time stop by Sandusky. Yeah, they were stopped at the, uh, the three yard line. They were first and goal at the five. Is Driving forward for some tough yards is Nick Webb, 183 pound senior running back. Gets it close to the first down now. We're gonna mark it about a yard short. You know, watching, watching, watching both offenses, and I think both teams coaching wise have done a great job of calling the plays that seem to work and trying to get, you know, get what they can. They know they're playing good defenses. I thought, I think on both sides of the ball, the offensive play calling has been very good tonight. First down. Getting into the backfield and close to tripping him up was Vinny D'Amico. If Vinny could have wrapped him up, he would have had about a four-yard loss on that. But first down has been gathered in by the Flyers, and they're going to wind the clock here. More than likely, this will be the final play of the third quarter. It's the tenth play of the drive for Clyde. Inside. Job there, Bob yeah, we'll st stand up Gunner Golden there after a couple of yards on that possession, and that's going to do it with the third quarter. So a very quick 12 minutes of football here as we get set to go with the final quarter from Strobel Field, Cedar Point Stadium. The Sandusky Blue Streaks on top of the Clyde Flyers, 21-7, as you're watching high school football right here on BCSN. <laughs> Clyde Flyers, they've got the ball at the 14-yard line, knocking on that blue streak door. During the 2019 high school football season, I'd like to thank our good friends at Matthews, Ford, and Sandusky. And when you make it Matthews, we can make it happen. So stop by for a test drive today at Matthews, Ford, Sandusky. Clyde looking at a second and seven. 
Trying to get outside. Maybe to about the 10-yard line for Lozier. So he's got get... about as much as he could get on that. He did it uh, just a few plays earlier to, to, to get three or four extra yards just by staying in bounds and kind of tiptoeing the sidelines. He did it right there again. Squeezed it down to the 10 where it'll be third in a long two. Call it three. They got that soccer line there. It looks like we have our we have our TV uh, line, you know, right around the first down marker. So Webb and Golden in the backfield. Inside, powered running, first down is just putting his head down and driving through is Gunner Golden for first and goal at the four for Clyde. Good hard run there, and, and you see these guys, both teams doing a great job uh, blocking and taking on blocks. I think all night we've seen just good football. Clyde up to that line of scrimmage quickly. Let's get with a four-man front. Backers ready to shoot the gaps. Golden. Golden driving. It's going to be stopped at about the one-yard line. Good blocking on the left side. Gave him a crease, and he was corralled at the one. Good hard run. Well, let's kind of spot it a little bit farther. One and a half, maybe. Yeah. But uh, nice hard run again, though, by Golden. And good job by Sandusky. They just uh, holding that line. And Lozier going to try to drive forward. And is he in the end zone? Clyde says he is. The players are giving the signal. The officials have yet to call it. Now they got the touchdown. Clyde Flyers, they go 63 yards. Took them 14 plays to do it. But in the end zone goes the quarterback, Ryan Lozier, for the touchdown. Boy, I they, they needed that. They definitely needed that, and that's a very nice drive and a, way, a great job of finally finishing a, a drive by the Flyers. Now an important extra point here to make it seven and not keep it eight. Guzman Moreno. Good snap. And right down Main Street for the extra point. So 10, 56 remaining here in the ball game and Clyde is on the board. Sandusky Blue Streaks, they lead by seven. 21-14 as you continue to watch high school football here on BCSN. Clyde Flyers have put points on the board and they are right back in this contest here. Pat O'Brien Chevrolet, they've been with us throughout the 2019 season and uh, no one has more trucks than Pat O'Brien Chevrolet with over 700 pickups and 100 heavy duties on display. Pat O'Brien, selection saves you time and money as we go with a squib kick. Outside. You talk about being a step away from going to the end zone, and we're talking J.T. Lewis. He was on his way. You know, I, I kind of caught the streaks off, off guard, that little squib kick, and J.T. Lewis, who had a touchdown earlier on the fumble recovery, uh, he picked it up, made sure he had the football, and then he wouldn't go down. So now excellent field position for the streaks. Oh, that would have been huge because he had nothing but green carpet in front of him. I'm going to assume that there was, Clyde was up to something with that squiver, but see if they get, couldn't kick it off a streak player and recover it. Stewart, plus one tackle, gets it across the 50 to the 49 yard line. This just so. shows you, you know, that's pretty bottled up and Terry and Stewart, when he gets it, he just, he, he is hard to take down. So even on when you think you got him, He's got four yards. Again, young man over 1,000 yards on the season now. 
16 touchdowns in his resume for the 2019 season. Only 16? Yep, only 16, yeah. Vinny D'Amico is now lined up for Sandusky at a tight end blocking situation. Quick out, trying to get a block for Kasten. Noah's across the 40 to the 38. There's some quick feet of Noah Kasten. He's able to drive forward and move the chains. I love that uh, screen pass to Kasten. They hit a, hit Kasten early on in the ball game on a few screens, but we haven't seen his name be called or the ball get thrown to him much here last couple quarters. I love that play right there. Good positive yardage again for the streaks. Critical component to that play is having good blocking from your wide receivers, and they got it on that play. Is able to get the first down at the 38. Boy, if Sandusky could take this ball down the field and score and keep that clock running. It, it look at Stewart, folks. Look at Terry on Stewart, touchdown. Folks, he made two moves that froze three defenders, and he left those guys on the field. 38-yard touchdown run, Terry on Stewart. And as I like to say... Heck of a run there. I mean, I just love watching this guy run the football. Dan Lindsley, I like to use the word wow, and he has the wow factor when he gets a football. He definitely does. and You know, that's a, that's a play that he's going to get good positive yardage, but he, he makes it... Once he gets to the outside or breaks a couple, it, there's no question he's going to make it in the end zone. He froze those DBs on that inside move, and then one step to the left, full acceleration, gone. Touchdown from 38 yards as in for that extra point will come Isaac Roop. Been perfect tonight. So boom that one through the uprights. So a big answer for the Sandusky Blue Streaks as they answer that touchdown by Clyde and get this back to a two possession game at 28-14 with 9.30 remaining. And that's one of the reasons with a man like Terion Stewart, he can give you points in a heartbeat. I, I gotta say, he, the, the kid is, he, he's strong. <laughs> he's fast, but what I love wa watching this kid is he, he's got the vision of, uh, you know, he looks like a college football running back. He's a Division I college running back on right his way now, to Bowling Green. You just don't see guys with that type of vision. You can't make some of the plays that he makes without that, and, and that's what's really cool. I mean, speed is speed, strength is strength, but he's got he's got all three of those things, and the vision is is really fun to watch. Again, a very special talent that we've been fortunate enough the last three years here on BCSN to enjoy watching him play for Sandusky. Been repetitive when I say he's got over 5,000 career yards rushing, closing it on 80 career touchdowns rushing. I mean, you can go on and on about Terry on, but uh, in 125 years of football at this high school, and the great running backs that they've had, I don't like to use the word great as an adjective very often, but they have had some great running backs at this school. He's right there. Yeah. I mean, you, well, you talked about somebody on their coaching staff, Corey Crew. Uh, yeah, wonderful, he, wonderful running back. Yeah, Corey played in the National Football League, folks. <laughs> and I can factor in some of the Williams brothers who went on and played major college football and just go on and on. But right now, the Sandusky Blue Streaks find themselves meeting in this contest by two as the Flyers will have the ball at about the 26. Another good kick by Franklin is uh, William Lozier able to get that out to about the 27. So that's where the Flyers are scrimmage with 9.22 remaining. But Dan Linsky, they're going to have to try to start taking some quick strike offense that's here I, now. I was just going to say that. I, you know, Clyde got the score to get back to a one-possession game. That didn't last very long. So streaks answer right back. But now with 9.22 to go, Clyde can't have a 12-play, you know, no, they can't. 72-yard drive that takes five minutes. They've got to get a score quickly. Sandusky's a tough team to beat when you're playing catch up. And that's what they're down by two scores. As Lozier's thinking up top, he wants to go deep. And that ball defensively back for Sandusky and almost picking it off for the Blue Streaks was Desmond Williams. He's, he's all over the place. Yeah, he was right Williams. there uh, with Carson Riemann. Freeman had a step. I think the ball was underthrown just a slight bit, but good coverage by Williams. Good job of playing the ball and not the receiver. You know, we seen, see a lot of talk in the national news about uh, officiating and the number of penalties and whatever. That was a good job by Williams not to get himself in a position to get a penalty thrown at him. Closure again, yeah. he gets leveled, and that ball's gonna be picked off. Ball is intercepted by Xavier Parker. 
So Xavier Parker comes up big for Sandusky. And I'll tell you, the quarterback, Ryan Lozier, he got leveled on that play. A clean hit. The referee was right there with it. I believe, once again, that was London Havens that came in there and introduced himself to Lozier. <laughs> Probably. Uh, he's, uh, he's been in, in the Clyde neighborhood all night. Uh, I, I was a little bit leery. I had to turn, I turned my head on that hit, see where he hit him. I was a little bit leery that we might look back and see a penalty flag, but a good clean hit and a, a nice pick. And that's the third turnover tonight, Ken, on the Flyers. And that's really kind of, they've kind of shot themselves in the foot with turnovers. Streaks have capitalized. Terry on Stewart. Stewart trying to get outside. Going to get maybe to the 46 yard line as a big block was put on Andrew Bauer. Slow getting up, but boy, you could see Terry on thinking to the corner, trying to get to the edge, but able to get four on that carry. Good block, good, you know, it just seems like Stewart, I don't know why, he just when he runs the football, you just get that feel when he gets outside, he's gonna go to the house every time. You hold your breath, my good man. Second and five. Stewart probing. Got there by there flyer to. defensive line, not allowing too much. Yeah, you got about three or four guys in there on the tackle. Leading the way was Britt Walker. Also in there was uh, Frank Foltz. You know, I, we haven't talked too, too much about this, but I'm really impressed, too, with the way Michael Franklin has just kind of orchestrated this offense. You know, having to step in because of a couple injuries just make smart plays, smart decisions. I mean, we have not seen the streaks, and I don't want to jinx this, but we have not seen the streaks turn the ball over tonight. And you got to credit Franklin quite a bit for that. Game management. Quick play, first down, breaking a tackle. Noah Caston to the 40. It's a race to the sideline. Noah Caston on his feet, across the 10, down to about the five yard line as Noah Caston really expressed himself on that catch and run. Outstanding work by that senior. Well, you give Caston space. We've seen it a number of times tonight. He can make he can make it hurt, and he did right there. Noah Caston getting 40 yards on that play. They're going to spot him at the five-yard line, and the Blue Streaks getting ready to blow this one open. What a fine catch, but boy, they run after the catch. They call those yaks, and that's what that was. Yards after catch by Caston. Just a great job there, and a good job again by Franklin. Just got found the opening, got the ball out quick. Stewart, cut. Terry on Stewart, touchdown. Terry on Stewart showing a couple of moves inside the five yard line, folks. And you don't see many athletes make that many cuts in a five yard so that, zone. I believe, if you told me correctly, starting this game, he had 77 career touchdowns. He's that's got correct. three tonight. So that's 80. Yeah, yeah 76 he, to be exact. Now he's at 79. You know, he's at 79. Yeah, I think he'll get 80 next week. But I'll tell you one thing, the Sandusky offense has answered the call as you get a look at number four. I've said it once, I'll say it again, he's one of the very best running backs in the state of Ohio in high school football. Terry on well over 1,000 yards rushing on the season, low snap. Good job of getting that snap. Oh. That's gonna be wide Good. on the extra point, but yeah, Roop took his time, and but the snap was low. But with 7-16 remaining, the Sandusky Blue Streaks have Got this one under control now as they lead 34-14. You've got high school football for you right here on BCSN. Terion Stewart and the Sandusky Blue Streaks on the offensive side of the ball have gotten busy here in the second half. Critical when the Clyde Flyers cut this thing down to a one possession game at 21-14, but Dan Lindsley, a couple of big answers by this offensive unit to put them in control. Well, we, we talked about an onset of the broadcast. Uh, Clyde, number one, could not turn the football over, but number two, you get Sandusky a lead and their running game and offensive line the way they have it, it, it's really, really hard to beat a team when they get ahead. Not to mention they're the home team, yes, senior yeah. night, all those other intangibles that go into it. 
Franklin kicks it down to about the eight yard line. Returning out is going to be Caden Olson. The only thing I'll say though is you still do have seven minutes to go. Or Game's over not seven over. Minutes. If Clyde could get a quick score, they're still within striking distance. Talking pregame with Ryan Carter, coach of Clyde, he said one of his major concerns was the foot speed of Sandusky and them being able to run with them for 48 minutes. He was very worried about the big play and the explosiveness of this offense, and we've seen a couple of those here tonight. Well, and it's not only been, it's not only been Terry on Stewart. It, you know, we, t we talked about Caston, and, you know, Noah Caston's made some big plays. Desmond Williams has made some big plays. Uh, J.T. Lewis had a big play. So there's speed not just in Stewart. It's, it's, the whole, it's the whole team. I mean, obviously, Havens and the way he's gotten in the backfield to disrupt things. Look at the pressure, but Lozier going to roll out on that pressure. He's looking for a block now, and he'll step out of bounds, but he's going to get the first down. Streaks really putting some heat on him as he tried to roll to his right. But very smart, heady quarterback, able to pick up the first down and run out of bounds with 7.02 remaining in the ball game. That, that is uh, the sign of a veteran quarterback there, Lozier. Uh, saw all that pressure and took off and, and got a first down. So another look to the sideline before we bring this play. Lozier sits in the pocket, going deep. It's going to be overthrown. He was looking for Carson Ream, and that's his main man when it comes to receptions. And the ball was overthrown, but right there, stride for stride, was Noah Caston. Well, Raymond's six foot four. That's probably one of the reasons why he's his main man. But uh, uh, just that that ball didn't really have much of a chance of getting caught, and probably okay because there was double coverage on on Raymond on that throw. Clyde is going to need a strike quickly if they want to get themselves back in this ball game. This time Lozier works under center. And thinking going deep up top. Riemann, it's got him. And it's going to be a touchdown for Clyde or tripped up at the three yard line. What a nice ball thrown by Lozier. Getting behind the defense that time was Adam Kobiak. Is that number five? Excuse uh, me, that is Raymond. five. That is Riemann. Yeah, so he got behind the secondary of Sandusky, and here's Clyde at the one-yard line with 6.44 remaining. Flyers not going there. away. A nice job by Noah Caston. He didn't give up on the play and saved the touchdown, at well, least momentarily. Sneak, and looks like in the end zone. He's in the end zone. So the Clyde Flyers with 6.36 remaining. They say, we've still got some football to play here, gentlemen. Well, that's exactly what they had to have is a quick score. And a, and a great job. Lozier put that ball in a spot where Ryman could catch it, and Ryman went and got it. He didn't stop running. He went and got it, and the momentum carried him almost to the end zone. That's a big score there for the Flyers. And let's give those guys up front uh, some credit, too. They had a nice pocket for him for Lozier as he was able to drop that one in for six. So big play for the Flyers. Up through the uprights we go again as All Guzman sudden, Moreno splits it. We got a game again. There it we looked are. like Sandusky had broken this thing open, and now we're down to a 13 point game, still 636. Both teams, or I'm sorry, Sandusky did use one timeout, but the, the Flyers have all three of their timeouts, so now it's can you stop? So that's what Clyde needed was the quick strike. They got it as the Sandusky Blue Streaks. At 34, Clyde now at 21. And let's see what Ryan Carter dials up here. Down a couple of possessions with six and a half to go. They tried that little pooch kick uh, on the last possession. So if C. Sandusky brings the hands guys up front, and it seems to be the case as they're going with their, all the receivers are going up into the uh, front, front line here. Smart play, being ready for anything now. Kind of better safe than sorry. Oh, yes. You know, it, it, even if they don't do it. Um, six guys, all hands guys up at the 50. And there's the onside. And it looks like the recovery is going to be made there at about the, what, 46-yard line. So good work. 
being able to handle that was J.J. Henry. So Sandusky, excellent field position. You roll the dice, you gamble, and this is uh, what happens when it doesn't turn out right. Well, I think the Ryan Carter's got to be thinking it's really hard to stop that Sandusky running game. And we need to get the football back. We obviously need two scores. But now Sandusky's got good field position. So even if you get a stop and they punt, you probably aren't going to have the greatest field position. So we'll see what happens. Stewart. Right there to make the tackle was Derek Coleman. Coleman at 183 pounds, met Stewart after a couple of yard carry. Also big as Walker Britt in there. Nice job there to to, uh, to, to kind of wall up uh, Stewart on that carry. You know, he's one of these running backs. A lot of you folks have watched him over these last three years. He's a kind of a back that he might get one yard, three yards, two, but all of a sudden, bang, he hits that home run for 60 yards, 50 yards, and because that's the danger he possesses as a running back. High snap, Stewart probing. Terry on Stewart driving forward, close to the first down. Let's see where they spot this. See, that's that's another uh, example of how good of a running back he is. He should have been taken down about three yards farther back than where he was, but he just kept he kept up. He dove forward. He's darn close to a first down, just about a half a yard away. And he didn't get the best spot in the world. They put him at the. 46, so about a yard short here is where well, five like and a half. He looked like he was uh, a little bit farther, but. So five and a half to go in the ball game, an important third down for Sandusky. Another high snap there. Stewart's gonna be bottled up, and that's not gonna go anywhere, so the Clyde defense comes up big on a third and one, and Sandusky is gonna have to punt that football away, because I'm sure Mike Franklin does not want to give up good field position because they lost a couple of yards, so let's kick it away. Great job there, Frank Foltz for the Flyers and Jack Morrison, both in there, and that, that's a huge stop, and I don't think you can gamble here. you got to punt the football if you're No Sandusky. question, yeah, you're down Certainly to four and a half. Certainly don't want to give Clyde the football at midfield. See if Clyde comes after this. Good snap. Franklin will spin one out, and fair catch is going to be called for and made at about the 17-yard line as Caden Olson handles that duty. So the Flyers with 4.28 remaining, three timeouts in their pocket. Down by two scores will scrimmage from their own 18-yard line. So that was a big third down stop by that Clyde defense. That was really big, really big to keep them in this ball game. And a nice punt there by Franklin. Uh, you know, you're going to have to go 82 yards. Obviously, you got to do that in, in a hurry. But the big thing here, I think, for Sandusky is good, solid defense. Don't give up any penalties and first downs. Well, they showed they can hit the home run, though. This Lozier got good protection now. He'll get out there on the edge. Might be a holding, but no holding on that play. Well, we got some flags all over the place. Now I think there might be a holding as Carson Riemann was <laughs> really blasted over there on the far side by Parker. But let's see if they're going to call holding on the Flyers. Good job by uh, Lozier to throw across his body and hit 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 uh, Riemann right on the hands. Hey, Riemann took took a good shot and held on to a good job of holding on. So waiting for the officials to make the call. Those flags came in late. Ah. So illegal pass. Legal forward pass. So Lozier must have been past the line awesome. of scrimmage when he threw it. It's tough to see from our angle. Well, well they'll back him up to the 15, so. Well, that makes sense, because right when that pass was thrown, there were like two flags that came out from two different officials. So both of them must have caught it and been on it that he passed the line of scrimmage when he threw it. Second and 15. Lozier on the out. So a couple of yards back with Carson Riemann. Riemann and Lozier here have uh, started to connect. Uh, yeah, but you know what? That's only about a three yard gain and uh, you're putting yourself right now in a third down and you need yardage. You need about what, nine yards on a third down? So are you in four down territory with inside of four minutes to go? Uh, I mean, normally you'd say no, but if you, if you want to give yourself a chance to win the ball game, I, I think you are, I mean. That, that's kind of what it is, so I, I guess you don't need to get it all here, but give changing yourself up, a chance. Changing up the play. 
They've run this a couple of times tonight. They're going to have more success again. I think he's going to get the first down. Yes, he is. Lunged forward. Clyde has run that play about three or four times tonight with Carson Ream, and when Lozier spins one way and comes all the way back, and it's been very effective. That one, Lozier, it, it looked like he did like a 360. You know, he'd spin all the way around. But a nice play to get the first down. However, if you're Sandusky, you've got to be okay with that. The clock's running. You're down near three and a half to go. Lozier again, loves to roll out. Pressure. Kind of a jump pass there by Lozier. They're going to keep the clock rolling, too. That's the critical component in this game now, folks, is that uh, you're closing in on three minutes and, you know, seven yards, eight yards here. Clyde's got to be thinking uh, big plays now. Yeah, Ryan Carter's not too happy. They, you know, he wanted the, the clock to stop, saying he was out of bounds. The official quickly said he, you know, he was... Not out, out of bounds. It's sometimes it's it, if you get pushed out of bounds, but you get stopped before you go out of bounds, they, they'll keep the clock running. That's what they do right here. Lozier looking. Boy, he got big pressure up the middle. Coming out of that linebacker spot was Rashawn Redding. He knocked Lozier to the ground. So here you are, third in about two. Stops the clock with 2.45 remaining. That actually might, although it's an incomplete pass, I think it, Clyde looked a little discombobulated on that play, so that, that's not the worst thing in the world. It stops the clock. you still got third and two, and obviously you're going to go for it on fourth if you don't get it. So probably better that that happened than, than Lozier trying to force the football someplace. They'll put Gunnar Golden back in that running back position now. They need three yards. Lozier again going to run this time. He's got a lot of running room. But there to make a good tackle, Xavier Parker to wrap him up at the 42. Say hey, what, great open field tackle right there by Xavier Parker. I know Clyde got the first down, but here again, stops him, doesn't get too big a yardage. That clock's going to continue to roll. And remember, Clyde's one score is not going to help him win the ball game. They need two. Thinking deep, a lot of time here underneath. Nice cut back, and there's a flag coming in. Two flags coming in here as we'll just continue to grind this out to about the 44-yard line. Now we're now, now we're things are really getting out shoving. of control. Boy, referees are all over this. This is getting real salty on the football field, folks. Okay, Nolson right in the middle of that. That's not pretty. So these referees are gonna have to sort this one out as things I'm really got out of one, control. One, two, three, four flags on the field. So they'll have to get together and figure this one out. Yeah, they've had some issues uh, in previous games with Clyde. Sometimes the fellas get a little overzealous. Is a lot of yellow laying out there on that green carpet. Yeah, it might take it might take Ken five minutes just to pick up the flag. Yeah, this will take a while. Like to an sort. Easter egg hunt out there. I think so, but this will take a while to sort out. But yeah, it, yeah that's one of those ones where bottled up. Probably wish the officials maybe would have blown the, the whistle a little bit earlier. They, might have stopped some of that action. I agree. Um, <laughs> you know, obviously he was bottled up for a few seconds, and then, you know, his, the Clyde ball player came in and kind of pushed pushed the pile, and then, you know, that just kind of got it, okay. everything going. The illegal use of the hands on Clyde, personal foul on Clyde. So nothing on Sandusky that time. So that's going to back the Flyers up. But the first penalty was the illegal use of the hands. And then you saw where the extracurriculars took over when the Clyde players, you could see a little, uh, how should we say, extracurricular activity in the pile. Well, I think what happened, like I said, I, it, it was another Clyde receiver who kind of came in and pushed that pile. Probably didn't need to do it. I, and the whistle may have blown. Well, this all happened on the play, so... Apparently the first, first down, down, yeah, the first down was gathered in, but what you've done now is move Clyde back to the 26, where they'll have to go first down, and it looks to me to be about 35 yards, or excuse me, 25 yards. Yep, so now you really have your work cut out for you. There's a holding call coming. Boy, that was an easy one, too. Yeah, we're up here in the booth, and I think everybody in the booth said holding. 
Yeah, and I'll tell you right now, uh, for Clyde, uh, Trent Cook, a uh, little extracurricular right there, and the referee could have called unsportsmanlike conduct, but the holding was called. Philip Hunter was all tied up there, and the referee's going to throw an another 10 yards on him. But no, I think it's, it's frustration a little bit setting in here for the Flyers. and. Um, Hold, I, I can see why it happened. Lozier was getting chased. But uh, yeah, now we're starting to get a little little bit extra after the whistle. Not what you want to see. Not what you want to see, and the referee yeah. missed that too. It's been a good football game, a good clean game for the most part, and you just hate to, to see it in the final couple minutes. Yeah, frustration begins to set in. Frustration set up. Now, I thought they did a nice job of, of getting right in the middle of the last skirmish, but now you just got to be, be careful with it on both sides. They got to go 42 yards to get a first down. Here comes the pressure on Lozier. He's going to get rid of that ball out of bounds. Once again, There's the Sandusky so much defense was there. On yeah. Lozier. He doesn't have time to, to look downfield. He's got to he's got to get out of the pocket. And by the time he gets out of there, he's got to be gassed. And you know, there even if he completes that pass, it's only about a five yard gain, and you need. You need to basically get to Perkins. By the yeah, you're pretty close. You got to get to the avenue here when you need 42 yards. And Ryan Carter, the head coach of the Clyde Flyers, said that his concern was going to be the team speed of Sandusky and trying to control that. And that's been an issue here tonight. As you're looking second and 42. So a couple of yards and some more out to the 22 as the streaks are there to wrap him up. Leading the way, Rashawn Redding again. Now we got a penalty again. flag on the, the Clyde sideline. Ryan Carter is pretty heated up, and I don't know what Ryan's all upset about. This has been a it's gotten very thing of the chippy. Past I sometimes think, yeah, yeah. is and and uh, being around and, and and you hate to say this, but. You know, sometimes it's hard to, to take a loss in a, in a game that means so much, but you just, you have to control your emotion a little bit better. I, I don't know what what possibly was the issue unless he wanted pass interference, but it was a screen pass. I, I don't know what he was looking for there. And here's the official call. Unsportsmanlike conduct going to be on Clyde, and that's going to back him up again as Ryan Carter's out in the field. And he's right now looking to get the head referee over to the sideline. They can talk about this. Well, he, some, Ryan's upset about something. And I don't, I don't know if it's something from previous plays or, or what, but he is not. I mean, Ryan's a pretty composed guy, but something has to be really up for him to be this upset. He is emphatic about his position on this call or whatever has transpired the last couple of plays. He's made his point, but the problem is that uh, unsportsmanlike conduct is backing Clyde up even further as this game has suddenly come to a crawl, my good man. <laughs> it's, it's last couple minutes yeah. here have taken a while, and I think the, the, the end result is going to be the same. It's just uh, now we'll, uh, we'll stop the action as the timeout has been called. And that will be Clyde's second timeout that they've called. I believe that was Clyde, or no, maybe Sandusky called that. Mike Franklin wants to make sure his guys keep their composure and you know, don't, don't fall into a trap. I think that's a, a really good timeout by Coach Franklin. Just that, hey, guys, you, you know, as a player, don't do anything. You've got the game won. You've yeah. won the game. The game's, the game's ours. Don't do anything silly that could get you, you know, thrown out of a game or whatever to, to not be able to play next week. Obviously, they have big games coming up the next couple weeks. Yeah, and this is critical where the officials really have to uh, take control of this this game right now with 142 remaining. Uh, Coach Carter's had an opportunity to uh, to vent and get his point across to the referees as he's still pointing to the he's official on the far side. Still upset. He, he needs to be careful. Uh, you know, I think once you, it takes a lot to get a penalty flag as a coach in high school football, but I think at some point you got to stop. So we'll get a couple of the yards back out to about the 26. Keep that clock rolling now. Then Clyde has to get to the uh, Sandusky 48. And what are we at now? Four, yeah. It was third and 41. Now it's fourth and. 
Go ahead, call it out. 27-37 for you. Got 23 yards to go. Yeah, it, we still got a ways to go. Yeah, and clock is moving. Lozier again liking to roll to his left, but here's the pressure up the middle, and down he goes, and that's going to do it. So an important victory for Sandusky here this evening as they're going to run their record to 6-2 and two and up their record to 2-1 and one in the Lake nice, Division. Nice tackle there, too, by the way, by Philip Philip Hunter getting in there, and, and this is a huge win for the streaks. Uh, keep them right in position for the playoffs and, and right in position for the conference. But I, I guess you're right about that, but I, I look at that Norwalk team, and i be honest with you, Mr. Lindsley, I don't see anybody knocking those guys off. I would agree. I would agree. But it, from a from a standpoint of coaching and everything else, you're still right there. You're one, you know, one loss by Norwalk away, a tie in, in in the Lake Division. So it's something else to think about and keep, keep your guys motivated. And a good job, I I think, um, discipline wise. We talked about an early going in this ball game. Sandusky had a couple penalties that hurt him. But ever since that first quarter, they've been pretty much penalty free. Carry on Stewart uh, running head on into Nick Webb. And here's another flag is said before, this thing's got the potential to really blow up. And the referees yeah. have got to get control yeah. on and it. I'll tell you this. I know Terry Ann Stewart is a, is a heck of a running back, but this game's over. I think Coach Franklin needs to get him off the field with you know, everything going on here, you don't want to get an injury late in the game when you already got the thing over. Okay, here comes your call again. Looks like another uh, dead ball, personal foul. This one against Sandusky, then we'll go back to Clyde. Offsetting so personal let's, foul. Let's play on. Yeah, you like be. to think now, Dan, let's just take the victory formation. That's get, I was take just going to say, that's just, just going to say is it might be time to just take the knee. Let's not get any more of this uh, back and forth that we've got in the last couple minutes of this ball game. So again, Sandusky ups their record to six and two, two and one in league play while Clyde Flyers, they go to five and three. And they've got Norwalk coming up next week while Sandusky will be traveling over to Bellevue for week nine. As you can see that uh, Mike Franklin is managing the play clock now down to six seconds. So let's get this thing over with and let's get out of here. Terry on Stewart. Continues to run I as Terry on Stewart does. I don't, I mean, I don't, he's fine, but I don't necessarily ne know if I agree with that just in the chippiness of this last couple minutes. Well, that's going to do it as the Sandusky Blue Streaks have come away winning this ball game against the Clyde Flyers, an important win for the Blue and White. As you can see, the young men from Hayes Avenue celebrating with their home fans here tonight. They know the importance of the night's contest, so the teams will. Hit the 50-yard line as the final score reads Sandusky 34, and Clyde 21. So that'll do it. We're going to step aside, back with some final thoughts as you've watched high school football here tonight on BCSN. What's the score? Teams at midfield as this Sandusky Bay Conference Lake Division matchup has been completed and the Sandusky Blue Streaks got on top early, stretched this thing out, to come away winning here tonight, 34-21. Dan Lindsley, some final I, thoughts. You know, just a, a, a good high school football game. I mean, really a couple big keys for the Streaks. They were able to get the three turnovers against Clyde. Sandusky did not turn the ball over. And then, obviously, what we knew coming into this game, Terrion Stewart and what he can do I uh, did it again tonight. Three more touchdowns and, and a big time win for the Sandusky Blue Street. Indeed it was as uh, we rack up, wrap up week eight here of this football season. So that'll do it here from Cedar Point Stadium, Strobel Field. Uh, we'd like to thank Dewey Furniture and Carpet for being with us as always and quality work by Nikki and the rest of our crew here. I'd like to thank my partner, Dan Lindsley. Good working with you, my man.
And this is Ken Walters reminding you, as always, to be sure to keep watching your high school sports right here on BCSN. As